of Ingaldo González in the, from the Basque Wikimedians User Group. And actually, this is part of my research for my PhD, so I'm not going to explain you how Abstract Wikipedia works, because honestly, I don't know. I'm going to talk more, more about the idea of the universal language. So, firstly, why I started researching this topic. Abstract Wikipedia is an example of this dream. And then some ideas about how, how this has been developed over history. It's more like a historic, re historical research. And then some open questions. I'm doing my PhD on philosophy, so I think that all philosophers make like, okay, this is the problem, and these are the open questions, and just figure out yourself. So why I started researching this, and its languages and strategies. So imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge in their language. That will be the sentence we are missing there. And with that idea, we are working on many Wikipedias, and we are working in many projects, and we are working, we, we have some examples of that. But the question is, okay, but why should we write? I mean, in a world where every article can be read in any language, like automatically generated, why should we, I mean, we, our Basque community or any other community, continue writing? What was the sense of that? And what should be a good strategy for underserved languages? I mean, what, what should we center on? That was the idea I was trying to figure out in my research. And then I figured out that there has been a dream, two dreams, from the illustration, from, from the beginning of encyclopedic content. The one is that universal knowledge is desirable, that there is something called universal knowledge that was first thought by the French ones and then by the English people and then again by the United States. So there's something that's universal is there, but we can achieve it because, okay, we speak different languages. Okay, yes, we can't agree easily. We have different backgrounds. and We are not enough people maybe to make that decision. I mean, I can agree with this French guy, but uh, what else? I mean, I can agree with the Russian, Russian one or whatever. And some other ideas, well, Okay, yes, we can achieve that, but we will need some more generations to happen. Like, uh, it will be a multi-generational work. And this has been around for, like, 300 years. Now is the moment where this universal knowledge is... I don't know, is it possible to do it, but, uh, okay, it's there. And we can figure out some ideas, like, okay, this will be the same article for everyone, like... I don't know, I was previously in one about medical uh, information. So, okay, the medical information should be the same for everyone. So that's universal knowledge. The second one is that uh, universal language is desirable. It's something that has been around for many years. But we can achieve that because we haven't tried enough. We can achieve that because there are political barriers. I mean, we can agree on that. We can agree on meaning. That's the main problem. At least that is the issue. And um, well, why? Because illustrated people already know Latin, then French, then English. So why are we going to make a new language? So that that will be the the idea there. But the dream has been around for also three hundred years. So that's the moment where after Wikipedia idea comes and it's like, okay, that's, that's something maybe related. Let's analyze that. So the first question is, what is a language? Uh, there are a lot of definitions, but let's say that a language has grammar. Every language has grammar. Can be somehow mathematically simplified. Somehow. Not every language has um, the same ways of doing that, but every language can be done, and so with that idea we are creating wiki functions, actually. Uh, there is a lexicon, every language has their own lexicon, so words have their meaning, and they usually appear in the dictionary, so I can sort of say that this word in Basque is like this word in English, and it's like this word in Polish, and it will make sense. It, everything is not there, but it will make some sense, so that's what we are doing actually with lexemes in Wikidata. Well, it has more. Language also has meaning, which is constructed socially, and the same sentence doesn't mean the same, even in the same language. And I'm going to give an example. If I say in French, ne me quitte pas, people know what that means, but it has some other issues. And I can't say in English, please don't go. And it's the same, but it's another song. I mean, so 
you know that the, no, but there is a meaning there that is external to the sentence itself. So language is not only grammar plus, plus lexicon, but for building an encyclopedia, maybe we can get rid of that because it's not so relevant. So the Wikimedia Foundation has two approaches to automatic translation that will be mint T or mint T. I don't know how to mint mint, which allows Wikimedians to directly translate content, but also there is Google Translate and other translators. And Google Chrome actually has a button that says, do you want to translate this? And I have seen lots of students, like they click it and they are reading, I don't know, English Wikipedia in Basque or Spanish Wikipedia in English or whatever they are doing and they don't know they are in another page and they don't know that they are reading and something that is only translated. So that's also something that is happening. There is also another approach to the universal language that will be after Wikipedia, which I say I'm not an expert on that, but renders the content from Wikidata, so lexicon, and the constructor from Wiki functions, and it gives some abstract about the topic. And also there will be Wiki functions that are where the constructors and the language renderers, which are different for each language. I mean, the mathematically construct of the language will be stored. So these two approaches are working at the same time, and there are other external approaches, like what they say, well, Google Chrome button or whatever. So it's after Wikipedia, the dream of a universal language. So I wanted to make for my PhD like a 10-page introduction about the topic. Now I'm writing the 150th page and it's not finishing. And it's like, okay, there is more here than thought. So I'm going to give some examples of this universal language and where it comes from. So we see that we have been trying to do that. We, encyclopedists, have been trying to do that for centuries. The first thing I have to say is that there has been two very different approaches. There has been a rationalist approach and an empiricist approach. For making it really simple, the rationalist approach says that concepts really exist and they are in our brain when we are born, every concept, like from a screwdriver, uh, bureaucracy, and chair, every concept is in our brain. But our languages are an obstacle to understand those concepts, so we finish up messing things and we should find a universal language that actually talks about the concept that is innate and is in our brain. I'm making quite a joke of them, but it's, it's what the rationalist approach says. The empiricist says, no, we are born with an idea, we are just animals, and we, we are born with an empty brain. And then our concepts are constructed, and only experience and measurements can work on that. So we can build a language which reflects that measurement which will be universal because we measure the same in the different places in the world, which is not true. The empiricist approach is what, for example, ChatGPT is making. We give all the information there is in the world and it makes a universe of that. It doesn't have a rationalist idea of what concepts are before, okay? And there are also two ways of building universal languages. One is called a priori languages, which means that we can just build a list of characteristics and create words that are completely new, that are the concatenation of those characteristics, like uh, animal, animal and rational is human, so animal has a letter and rational has another one, and so human is the combination of those two letters. Or a posteriori languages, which are, for example, Esperanto, is languages that are constructed just to may be more understandable by a white community because they serve some concepts or ideas or grammar or whatever. Okay, so some historic, some historic, historical examples, and yes, all are males. Uh, I don't know why, but all are males. So the first one will be Ramon Yul. This is a Catalan from Mallorca in the 13th century. He works encyclopedias in Catalan, Latin, Arabic, and Hebrew, and he wanted to show the other religions about the truth. So what he says is, okay, we can make a calculator. Okay, we can make wiki functions, actually. We can make a calculator, which is this, which has some kind of rotation system where we can calculate the truth of different sentences or if the sentences are fallacies. So he was... Maybe not the first one, but the first one in the Western world to say 
it can be atomized. Ideas can be atomized, remixed, and we can discuss about the truth of these ideas. So Arabic people, Muslims and Jews, know that they don't have reason. We Christians have it. That, that's the main idea. But the idea behind is we can build a calculator to know that. Then René Descartes came and discussed with Mersenne, the one with the prime numbers, about this idea. But René was an um, empiricist, so he said, oh, no, but I mean, we, we can have a universal language if we just expand science, make science more. I mean, science has a unified language, so everyone can be reduced to science, and we can agree on that. But words don't have an intrinsic meaning. That's a grown idea. And actually, if we, everyone could agree on what things mean, we don't need a universal language because we are in paradise, so why wonder about, why worry about the universal language if we are in that paradise? That, that will be his mockery of that, but he, he said, that, okay, yes, we can make it, but just expanding science, not, not with the ancient idea of Ramon Yu. Then this great thinker came, Leibniz. Let me say, okay, but language has genealogies, like English and German are quite related, French and Spanish and Italian are quite related, so there might be a primordial languages, that is the language which Adam talked what? So can we, someone, figure out what that language is? But there is also algebra, which is a universal language, or at least a grammar. So he said, okay, we can calculate if things are true or not using grammar. And then we have these things he called calculus ratiocinator, that is rational calculus. And we can also construct a list of universally accepted words represented with numbers that will be the characteristic of universality, so the universal character that things have. So you have grammar and you have lexicon. How does it work? It doesn't work, but how does it work? Okay, if an animal is two and rational is three, human must be six because two times three is six. But seven, that will be monkey, is not rational because seven by three is not a rational number. So that's, that, that's the idea behind that, okay? He only gave that example as far as I know, but that idea, I mean, we could build a list of numbers for everything in the world, like a wiki data queue or something like that, that actually reflects the exact a sense of that, of that object. That, that would be the idea of Leibniz. Of course, he, he, he couldn't get it. But there were people working on that, on characteristic universality. This is, for example, Ludwig, uh, an Englishman who said, okay, but we can derive everything to lexemes. Like, drink is one lexeme, that will be that D. And so we can say the drinker, drink, the drinking, drunkard. Drunkenness and drinking house with just adding some symbols. And these symbols can be universal. And he also said, okay, but we can do this. We can also build a list of words and a list of grammar features that will be that left 2314, P2477, and PF2477. This looks very Wikidata itself, which means honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, okay, but speaking numbers is difficult, so we can give even a pronunciation and say left to on for peto for sensen and pifto for sensen, which means for everyone in the world, you will honor your mother and your father. That, will, that was his idea, and, and, and it's not grown. I mean, it's just an idea. Then Wilkins came, this is one of the most famous in universal language, and he said, okay, we can make a very complex ontology of every item in the world, assign just letters, and then build things. So for, for example, if de means element, def means the first element, and deba means the characteristic of the first element, because that's the way he built ontology, then deba means flame. Why? Because in his thought, the first element was not hydrogen, but fire. Okay? But that's the universal thing he has. And he also says sit, uh, it's not an A, it's an alpha in Greek. Okay? Sit alpha was literally a dog because. I mean, it's an animal which is viviparous carnivorous and canis, not an egg, which is not canis, okay? It's an alpha. And he also invented some letters to, to, to pray to God, okay? There you have an example of our fathers uh, pray with the letters or whatever, numbers. In the other side, Comenius, which is a Czech uh, 
pedagogic father, father of pedagogy or whatever, said, okay, yes, no. Uh, knowledge comes from observation. So complex things must be illustrated to be universally understood. So if we want to create a universal language, that will be pictoric. And there are three states. The first is Pampedia. We need first universal education so everyone understands the same things. Then we ha will have Pansophia, that is universal philosophy. Everyone is educated, so everyone has philosophical language, knowledge. And then is Panglotia, it's your universal language, which everyone will agree because we have the same education and the same philosophy. And he said something quite interesting because he was a priest. He said, knowing things by others' reason is not knowledge but belief. So if someone other says that, okay, but Deva is evidently a flame, so no, that's your impression of the thing. I mean, a flame is this and you can paint it. The most interesting person I have found in this research is Nicolas de Condorcet. He was an encyclopedist himself from the French, uh, first enci French encyclopedist. He was killed in the terror in the French Revolution. And that's why we don't have all his works, because he died before writing everything. But his main concern was, why should we write an encyclopedia if it can be lost? I mean, we can't lose it. We can lose everything we have built. And then the next generation will be starting from zero, because they have lost everything. So he said, OK, let's make a backup, write it in stone, build a mine, bury there, and then make in some cities some giant monuments where they have some clues of where it is buried. So the next generation, if there is a world war, know where it is and can start not from zero, but they have some backup. But this should be done in a universal language because who knows if the future they will speak French. Maybe not. So he said, OK, we have a we can have a universal lexicon with a decimal system. He was fascinated with the decimal system. And he said, OK, with empiric information. So our Q1645, it's not me. Our Q1645 for him was 000, 000 99 which is an oak. OK? And he also said, OK, but we have language, but we, don't, we, we have lexic but it also needs a grammar. So he created a grammar for every scientific issue, like chemistry, mathematics, whatever, the, a universal grammar. And then he said, OK, now I'm going to start, start with social scientists. And he died. So <laughs> that's the problem there. So yeah, end of the 19th century, 20th century, some logical people, Bull, Freck, Peano, came and said, OK, yeah, the, the, the lexicon is not possible, but actually logical thinking is possible and we can create a language for computing things. And actually, this is the basis of computers. So yes, they, they succeed on that. Well, this is Nikolai Marr. He's a Russian. He said, OK, but proletariat will have their own language because Socially, they will have, and it will be transmitted by telepathy, okay? <laughs> and it will be near Armenian or Basque, but whatever, I mean, is there. Then there came people who say, okay, yes, but we can construct an actual language that will be the first one with Volapuk, then Esperanto or Loglan, that are auxiliar, that are universally understood, and everyone will know them, and we will live in peace. Because if we speak the same language, we have peace, that's something that we know for Empirically, empirically, and many of those have Wikipedia versions, actually. But the interesting thing is that there are as universal in scope as many other languages versions. I mean, Esperanto is more is not more universal than Czech, for example, or Polish. And the last one will be the Vienna Circle. That will be people in Vienna in before the World War II, that say, again, the only universal language possible is pictoric. Metaphysics will be out of this. But we can make something Nogath, Noigath made isotype. They also made a project called Mundanium that was a universal atlas museum and encyclopedia that could be replicated and navigate all over the world. And they made giant, giant things for that. And you can see it in Brussels, I think. They have a store there. And sorry? Yeah, in Belgium, somewhere. And, and they made a universal approach to sim symbols, and this is important because if you go to an airport, you, you know where to make things because there are some universal symbols. So this is, was the first approach. 
Okay. So we have seen like for many centuries, in the 30th century, there have been this idea of maybe encyclopedia. Encyclopedic content should be in a universal language, but we don't know how. So, are we there? So, abstract and wiki functions have a genealogy. Calculating languages like Lulu, Leibniz, Sir, and Frege and Bulu also have made. Separating grammar, like Dider, or maybe the best approach there. Operators and entities are independent, and we can combine, combine them later. Ontology matters. Like Wilkins and Dalgarno say, okay, let's build an ontology first, and that is something we have been doing, doing in Wikidata. It should be language independent. I mean, natural language are derived, but many proposal dictionaries, many proposed dictionaries from that universal language, so that will be something very similar. Virtually infinite items. This is a problem that Wikidata, well, not infinite, I know that it's not infinite, but um, Wikidata can solve that couldn't be solved in the 18th century because they didn't have computers, so they have, okay, let's build a list of 2,000 things that are relevant to everyone, that, that will be the approach. And also we have an image backup, we have commons, and this is something that the pictorial things came. So, are we there? So the problem is, if we succeed, let's, let's think that we succeed. I mean, let's be optimistic with that. Uh, is, is that optimistic or is that pessimistic? I mean, it's, it's really desirable or are we going to face new problems? So some open big questions or some open problems that uh, I, I would like to work and I'd like to reflect and, and think with you is, okay, so who is going to write those articles in abstract? And whose knowledge will be that? Uh, is it going to be very tech Save people is going to be German specifically. Who is going to write about that? And how can we justify overriding it in our language? So let's imagine that 1,000 people, uh, three minutes, no? <laughs> 1,000 people have agreed on something and they say, okay, yes, but that's not relevant to me. So is universal knowledge reflected in the universal language something that? we actually want or was, was, yeah, but in my language I will write it differently because, you know, objectivity is different in different places of the world and there are more than one objectivities. Um, I can see with the number there, but can, how are we going to handle minorities and their points of views? And when I say minorities, some more minorities are half of the population actually, but, uh, you know what I mean, and I mean there are lots of views that can be excluded because the set of people who is going to write on that abstract is smaller than the actual whole set of Wikipedians. And the idea will be, will the Basque Wikipedia be written by the wisest mind in London? Something in London that has a lot of time and he wrote the British Encyclopedia and said, okay, yes, but I can write now the Basque Encyclopedia because it's the same and what I see from Greenwich is, is actually the war. I mean, from here, I mean, in the Syrian Meridian, I can see everything. So that are the questions that are open. I mean, we are near, we have a genealogy of that. Maybe we are going to solve the issues that they had like for 300 years, but then the questions are not technical, but are social. How are we going to do this? How are we going to override? How are we going to justify that Indi and Urdu Wikipedias have a different point of view of some things if some things can from there. And another idea that is there, Wikipedia's value over, for example, Chat GPT is that Wikipedia has been written by people. So this is one of our values. Someone has taken their time to write this. If I can access 16 million articles in Basque, will the social value be the same value? I mean, will people say like, okay, yes, now in Basque they have 16 million articles, why? Because some other machine has been written, and what is that? why is that different from ChatGPT? And why is that different from other sources? And why should I trust that and not the others? And how we differentiate something that has been written by a person and, and a machine? So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And we don't have time for questions, but I will be outside. Okay? Or if there is some 20 second question. Uh, we have three minutes for questions. Ah, okay. Then three minutes and 16 seconds. What is 217.492 to do? Check on Wikidata. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> it's thank you. It's the action of thanking. <laughs> okay. I can't hear. Okay. Sorry. Uh, do you do we have a vision for incorporating multiple points of view on abstract Wikipedia right now? Are we thinking about, like for example, uh, if I want to talk about Katowice in here, for example, Polish version may have detailed uh, information, whereas uh, English version may not need all those details. So the current plan for abstract Wikipedia does it think in that lines or is it like? Every article in every language should have the same content. I, I don't know. There is people from from NASA Wikipedia yeah. that maybe can answer that, but I think it's, it's a later. It's a very complicated question. <laughs> maybe we can answer that later. But it's let's say that point of views is one of the things that we are working on, and we don't have an answer yet because it's it's gonna be a complicated answer anyway. <laughs> Hi, um, I was wondering, so, so let's say we write Wikipedia in, in a universal language, um, how would referencing work? Because <laughs> referencing still uses non-universal language or you know, the <laughs> language of the sources. Okay, I think that that's one of the problems uh, because uh, you, can, you can see it, you can go to, uh, it doesn't happen with World War II where we have very clear but who were the bodies, but not in the first world war. And if you go to the French article and you go to the German article of the war, they are not very similar, not very similar. And both are right because both has very good encyclopedic content and both has references to French and German historiography. So that's the way where it fails the universal language issue uh, when there are different point of views. And I agree that the article about Jupiter could be very similar in many languages, but maybe not some other articles. And there, yes, abstract Wikipedia doesn't promise that eh, this is what you have to do, it will be shorter, and maybe not useful for that. But it's not only about point of views, it's about what is neutrality in different communities, and how has people adopted that neutrality, and what is valid, like historiographically valid in German, in French, in English, or whatever. And now I think it's all about if you go to the Waterloo Battle articles in English, it's said that it was the um, defeat of Napoleon. And if you want in French, it uses to say it was the victory of English. So that's it's not it's, it's pretty specific nuance, but it's not it's not trivial. And there there might be some issues with uh, references. As far as I know, you can overwrite it in your language. So there will be some issues that won't be der derived directly from Master Wikipedia, as far as I know. <laughs> Thank you.